Hey guys, I am going to be out here a bit longer because uh, they said it was going to be sunny in the morning. It is like 12 degrees or so plus centigrade out here, Celsius. Hi, it's Celine and today is Friday the 19th of February and I haven't been on all week after a couple of weeks where I haven't been on regularly at all and I miss it and I don't want my YouTube to just completely disappear from my life either so uh, I'm going to be squinting at you for a bit because the sun's you know trying to go like that um, the reason I haven't been on is because there was you know just too much confusion turmoil things were less than perfectly clear for me and as it is now I think I'm through that only just so I hope I'm making, I'm making this into a little short uh, witchy check-in type video just to show you guys that I'm still out here and still alive and uh, actually things are looking up quite a bit what with this goodness here mm. this is just so nice I just had my cup of coffee outside and for the first time this year and that means like four months or so ago the last time that I actually had a coffee out here and I tend to more or less live here in my yard as much as possible and so um, I missed that quite a bit I've also had a number of ideas and realizations and things that happened to me I had really good cards this morning which I should show you hang on bear with yeah well um, mystic masters cards which is just these five that I picked uh, that I brought to show you what it looks like basically to me I had um, what happened was that there was an astrological conundrum going on over the past two weeks I think basically that's what what it was first Mars and then the moon uh, conjuncting my north node at 2108 degrees <laughs> in Taurus I didn't expect it to be this messy it looks like I actually got a chance to reinvent myself which is like okie dokie you know I'm all in for that um, it turns out it's not that easy <laughs> you really have to be prepared to not be prepared you know to just anything everything changes so if you redefine yourself so that was uh, apparently something that I needed and wanted one specific way in which um, I've come to realize that this is actually really positive and one way I can you know sort of deal with it and live with it all is by realizing that I am a very receptive person I'm a very empathetic em empathy filled I'm basically an empath I suppose there's tons of videos about empaths and uh, you know highly sensitive people that kind of thing personality types on YouTube and elsewhere as if that's a, a really special thing to be or to have and uh, I don't know whether it's just me or whether it's the society I grew up in both I suppose uh, the world we live in doesn't really value receptivity and you know openness and sort of being this like a goldfish bowl where you can look through everything and everything just passes through you like that um, that's not valued right that's not considered you're supposed to be strong and um, resistant and resilient is the best way you know flexible okay but not you're not supposed to absorb everything in the world in the whole world around you and just you know um, have all sorts of 
mood swings and temperament issues and whatever else as a result of absorbing everything around you. So that's more or less what I um, what I was thinking about. I'm trying to reorganize my cards here at the same time with not having the wind blow them away <laughs> because it was kind of neat also to have these cards because um, it all depends on what you want to see, really. I think that what with what happened is I, ca I kind of got into a zone over the past two weeks where what with lockdown and everything else going on in this country, I just couldn't, uh, I didn't have the energy anymore to invent things to do or to get busy with, you know to read or to research or to things to make. I did do a bit of oil painting actually quite surprisingly and I will uh, return to that um, soon enough. I've been working on three little small paintings actually um, in a stage where they're sort of the basis is already done and I can fill in more details and that was working really well for me. That's given me quite a bit more courage to keep going through the past weeks. However, um, there was this whole thing going on where I just didn't seem... Yesterday was really bad. I just was... I was nearly depressed, you know. I was nearly in a, in a real state of being, you know, fixed. Fixed down, pinned down in a state of... Uh, of frustration and immobility and not being able to, to get my ass to, you know, get anything done or anything, not any thought. It was chaotic. I was all alone by myself in the house. It was raining. I kicked myself out of the house and eventually I spent most of the afternoon uh, traipsing around the neighbourhood. I actually chose to go and do a little bit of shopping that I had over at the other end of the village rather than at my supermarket market, which is really close by here. Uh, so as to have a bit more, a longer walk. And on top of that, um, in that same square where that supermarket is, there's also like a little thrift store. So everything's closed up here, you know, everything's closed. You can't get your hair done, you can't go to the thrift store, you can't go have a coffee. There's no options, nowhere, only the internet. <laughs> so that's been driving me nuts. Um, however, at this little thrift store, they actually have um, sort of a, a bookcase outside with books and a couple of other oddments and newspapers and things that they uh, give away for free, you know, just one of those. It's not really a um, one of those type bookcases where you put books in and you can sort of free exchange books like a little street library kind of a thing. I don't know what that's called where you are. Uh, we have those around here as well, not close to not close to here and sometimes they disappear again. So it's not like that. This is just a couple of cases of uh, stuff. So I went over there and I went through all the books and actually found uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, yes. <laughs> Which makes me laugh because he was one of my dad's favorites, I think to the extent that I know anything about my dad's favorites, really. Um, so I stood in the street reading French for the first time. Thank you for that. That's just somebody on a moped. They'll leave soon enough, I hope. Um, in the rain. <laughs> I stood for about an hour or so underneath uh, somebody's awning because... Um, there he goes, eventually. There you go. <laughs> um, I just stood, stood uh, reading most of that. I lived in France as a kid and my French is still quite good enough uh, to be able to do this. And I found it um, entertaining and kind of restorative to use uh, an ability that I actually have in my brain that I don't normally, I don't normally read French often anymore because there's no need. This is the Netherlands, so we speak Dutch here. I read and speak a lot of English. 
occasionally German. We in this country tend to grow up with those three foreign languages anyway, at least my generation. French is a bit harder for lots of people. So I was actually quite proud of myself being able to read Jean-Paul Sartre outside in the rain, <laughs> you know. The piece I was reading was actually, it's actually a play and it's about three people being locked in a room for some weird reason. It's a bit surrealist somehow and they get on, his, on each other's nerves very much, two women and a man and they um, sort of force each other to tell the truth about their lives. Looks, In the end it turns out that they're in some sort of a purgatory type situation and it was actually rather entertaining. I enjoyed doing this and especially, especially enjoyed not having this at home. So in the end I looked on my internet, there was a, uh, on my phone, there was a, a sort of a lull in the rain so I managed to get myself home in that period and not get completely soaked. I finished the book at home, had a cup of tea went in the bath and sort of it was like okay so this is like a moment of zero resistance at this moment i just gave up on wanting you know wanting to be or do things that i can't do at that point let's just accept the way things are at the moment and um i was actually quite successful at that and afterwards life did seem a bit easier and um, so there's all these, it's like conflicting issues. If you, if you are pressured, everything becomes a conflict inside you. Even your positive qualities become, they come into conflict with each other when normally they, you know, normally, whatever normal is for you, it all works together really. Being receptive, being proactive, being creative, being emotional, all those things, you know. I, to me, all this makes perfect sense, being an intellectual, reading a lot, it, but I had to sort of detach from everything and come to a standstill in a way. And I don't really know what it was that happened during the night. I suppose I came, I was looking for an area in my life, some type of a vibrational atmosphere higher up like a higher self kind of an atmosphere and I actually managed to contact that really quickly and really easily and I felt I immediately felt uh, comforted inside so this whole sense of emptiness kind of faded away there is more to me than meets the eye also to myself and so I think I tend to be really reductionist normally this doesn't work anymore for me I have to be open and there's the receptivity again but now I realize that receptivity this type of receptivity that's really natural to me and completely normal for me in my life um, is actually a positive quality. It is not an absence of defenses, strength, whatever else. It is a positive thing if I make it so, if I if I see it as such. So my cards, um, I pulled, at first I pulled two cards out of these five and I felt, uh, I had pulled five and then I felt like just those two were okay, it was enough, you know. I got the four of coins, which looks like this. And the five of coins, which looks like this. The deck is well shuffled, so it's been shuffled around for quite a bit now. So that didn't really make a lot of sense at that point. So I went like, okay, so I had those three other cards that I'd put back in the, in the deck. Let me get those. They were on top of the deck, so I could just get get them. How about I get this five, this set of five? I'd been looking on the internet at little a little uh, Virgin Mary chapel that I've visited occasionally with my husband in the south of the country in Limburg, 
and uh, being a bit sentimental about that because there's a bed and breakfast close by where I would give nothing more than to just go there with my husband right now for three nights or so and just, uh, you know, traipse around the countryside and it's a bit hilly down there and there's lots of little Virgin Mary and Mother Mary chapels and like these little shrines, roadside shrines. I am not about roadside shrines. This one that I was thinking of just this morning is actually a bit bigger than your average, you know, like mailbox type. It's actually a fairly large, uh, more like a, a bus stop type of a little building made out of stone. And the inside has, it's a, like a vault like that, or a, what's that called? A vault, never mind. The inside of the roof. And it's painted blue with stars on. And there's little flowers and a little white fence and people light candles and stuff like that. It's just my... If there's got to be religion in your life, that's it, you know? So I felt like my cards, yes, I'm going to get back to my cards. I'm not being really chaotic. It just looks that way. <laughs> I felt like if I have, these are, so numbers three, let me see. I have five cards here like that. Numbers two and four are my four and five pentacles in here. Okay, this one and this one. How about, this is my shrine of cards at the moment. So that's what I had a thought just coming, everything sort of merged together in my brain like that. So the middle would be the person who is in the shrine. The hermit is in the middle. I don't get hermits that often. I used to, lots, but not anymore. And to one side, I get the moon card on the side of the four of pentacles and on the other on the side of the five of pentacles i get the sun card oh. so this was like a sort of an affirmation or a confirmation of my whole little shrine idea i thought that was so cute and so encouraging to realize for me what this means what those cards mean for me is the Four of Pentacles attitude of, what is it, Sun in Capricorn, I just looked that up, so a bit more, you know, possessive, down to earth, wanting to hold on to things, with regards to moon issues, with regards to my own emotional issues, just be, you know, claim and hold on to uh, that side of me. Whereas on the other side, there's the sun side, which I tend to associate like, with being a Leo and all that. Uh, with, uh, you know, going out, being confident and not having that much of a care. Being a bit superficial, really, as to, compared to the receptivity that I'm all about, really. <laughs> I mean, if I'm honest, that's what my life has been like. I am a very receptive, uh, you know, somebody you'd, you'd qualify as an HSP normally. So I don't know what I was thinking, trying to be a, this Leo, you oh, know, la la la, it's all fine kind of a person. So that's where I got my five of pentacles, my five of coins, with uh, much more of a sense of, um, I'm always interested to see how the rider weight type interpretations originate with the astrology of the, um, who was that? Um, Constant? Uh, Eliphas Levi, Levi, I think, is the one who developed this schematic of those astrological meanings for the tarot cards, using probably using Marseille in those days in the early 19th century. And that's what the whole tarot meaning as we use them today is based on, really. And for the Five of Pentacles, the astrological identification card, if you like, is uh, Mercury in Taurus. So what that means to me is a Mercury, an intelligence really, that is being slowed down um, like nine-tenths of the way. Slowed down. So that's, um, that's why that can feel really sad, why that can feel really isolated because we tend to be, as humans, we tend to be about exchange and 
you know, reaffirming ideas and working together and all that good stuff. And this is this is a moment in time where you're thrown back onto yourself. What with my North Node in Taurus, that was exactly the case, you know? So there's less of a sun inside me and more of a moon. And I'm told by my cards that this is actually, uh, it's fine, you know? It is a perfect map of what it is that I'm doing. So that's 20 minutes that I actually managed to talk to you about all this quite personal stuff. I think I might manage to make some sense here. The sun's going in and out a bit. There's uh, bits of fluff passing over. I think I will uh, go back inside now because I am cooling down quite a bit. Um, maybe paint a bit because I've got a date with my friend to go into town to go to the Asian supermarket together later the, today and tomorrow I'll be on a big client run with husband all day long so I won't be out on the channel uh, very soon again I think um, but I'll be back and I'm very much still alive and I just love this moon card and I love this deck mm, it's becoming more and more precious to me more and more that's the thing with the positive aspect to things things that you suffer from maybe they're like a mirror image of a positive part of you that you have to embrace and learn to embrace somehow on that note I'm going to say goodbye thank you for watching and being here and uh, I'll be seeing you next week okay bye bye for now